Hello, how's it going? You been a good cat? Hey? G'day, I'm Mark from Salsa Fisher Me, and this is a little bit different from my normal run of the mill gardening and uh, chickens and quail videos. I thought I'd bring you my latest project, which was building a cat run and cat cage for our Russian blue here. As you can see, He's absolutely loving it up here. Having a great time out getting a bit of sun and uh, it couldn't have gone any better, this build, than it, than it has done. Now the cat's gone inside, but this gives us a good opportunity to show you him coming out and doing the cat run thing. So he comes out the gym door there and up into this wall unit where now he's got distracted but he can climb up that wall unit so that he can reach the archway go across the archway which obviously keeps this area clear down into his main cat enclosure so he just goes over that beam underneath the top deck down here into the cat enclosure and uh, he can then access either side, that side or that side for the run and this particular run we had some left over so we extended it but we may well extend it right around the corner in the future but for now this is plenty good enough and it goes through the other side so after this rather lengthy introduction you'll be able to see my mindset right from the beginning. And that's, that's what I was trying to get to because every place is different. Now, if you're one of um, you, my subscribers to this channel and you just like watching my videos, um, thank you very much. Th that's pretty cool. You might not be interested in building a cat run, so it doesn't really matter so much. You might be just interested in what's going on here. But for those of you who stumbled on through Google or through YouTube search and are looking to build a cat run, even though my cat run and my place is completely different to yours, you know, you're still going to be able to apply my line of thinking. And that's why I've gonna, I'm going to use a lot of outtake, well not outtakes, a lot of diary clips as I put this video together, including you know every little bit of the build so that you get an idea of not only how I put it together, but my thoughts behind it. And that way you can apply that to any build in any scenario, no matter it's an apartment or a house or an acreage like this or whatever. So I hope you enjoy the video. Let's just get into it. We've got a cat. It's a Russian blue, had him for about six months, named Geo, really beautiful cat. We've got him inside because we wanted to keep him as an indoor cat. We've got dogs all around us from all the neighbors. We've got our own dog who we're not sure would handle him out without our supervision. And also, you know what cats do. They get out there, they kill the wildlife. We've got a nice acreage with beautiful birds and we don't want that disturbed. Problem is, he's going stir crazy inside. I mean, you know, he's good most of the time, but you can just see he sits up on the window. He looks all mopey sometimes. He's, watches me out in the garden. I feel sorry for him. So what we're gonna do is build a cat run. So there's the four parts to the inside there for the cat cage. And I've got the up the wall thing over here. But anyway, I better start just assembling these things rather than talking about it. And so I can get this little fella out here in the next few days. And that's what I began by doing is assembling the large cat enclosure first. Now I got this from Better Pet Systems here in Australia. But if you Google cat enclosures, cat runs, you'll come up with a range of providers or manufacturers of these products, especially online now, because it's becoming increasingly popular to get cat enclosures and cat runs, simply because it's unacceptable these days to leave your cats run wild around the neighborhood. It came in four large boxes, 
Uh, postage cost about 200 bucks. Overall, the whole thing cost uh, just over 2000 so pretty expensive. But I factored in that I was getting it powder coated, so painted the way uh, to match our, our place. And a flat packed product I could easily assemble myself, which saved me a lot of time. Because I'm certainly no welder. Have you ever put anything like this together? Where you've got a big metal cage or something like that that's been pre-hole drilled, even a piece of furniture. Always tighten it up, finger tight first, each bolt and nut, and then go around. Once you've got the last bolt and nut in, then you can go around and tighten it up properly to full tightness. Because if you don't, and you tighten everything to full tightness as you go, you might find that you won't be able to line up the nuts and bolts through the holes as you would have liked. Now for the record, this video isn't sponsored in any way and I didn't even get a discount when I bought the package. Well that was really easy. Everything lined up. Didn't come with instructions. It didn't need them, really. You could just see where the bolts were supposed to go. And uh, down the bottom four to each panel, roof on, everything cool. I can put this on later. I need to buy a few screws, but that's uh, nothing really. Yeah, all very good. So after assembling the main enclosure, I put together the wall climber. Had to work out where I was gonna put the stairs I could have used wood, you could use wood off cuts, but I chose to get the stairs as accessories. And then you position them around by just clamping them to the cage itself. And you know, you position them as you could imagine the cat climbing up, making it as easy as possible. At the end of the day, I ended up having to use a few other wood off cuts just to make it easier for him to get up and down. Then it was just a matter of positioning it in the right spot. Got this crude method of things that I've got around the house to get it up to height so that I can attach it to the top beams there and also I'm going to attach it to the wall as well so that's nice and secure so once I've got that done and that cage in here with a base I'm going to put a wooden base down so otherwise I'll just use the, the dirt as a, a stinky kitty litter tray and you don't want that so I'll have a proper wooden base um, I could I could use pavers or something else, but I've got some scrap wood from our old staircase that I'll use. And uh, once I've got that there and that there, then I can start working on the runs. Working on putting this thing here, uh, the 16 metres of run, around the place and attaching it so that I know where to go. I found some old saddle clamps in the shed and that did a perfect job in holding it into place with just some standard wood screws into the top deck there, no worries. Then I fixed it to the wall by getting a couple of those shelving brackets and I marked it out properly in the brickwork, then used a masonry drill, drilled into the wall and then used some masonry anchors to attach it to the brickwork. Came up pretty good, nice and sturdy. Used some zip ties to attach the climber to the brackets. The next thing I did was some gardening and I did quite a bit of chopping and uh, I'm not sure if the missus was uh, totally happy with me. Uh, I used some self-tapping screws to attach the lock and that didn't come with the kit. I was a little surprised it didn't because it came with the actual lock and slide but Anyway, it didn't matter. I mean, I had the screws in the in the shed, just metal screws. And likewise, I had the flooring because our old staircase, like I mentioned before, was pulled down. And I'm glad I kept some of those stairs that weren't uh, eaten away because uh, they made for a good solid flooring. Then I dragged this in. Pretty easy to handle. I mean, you know, it, it took a bit of effort because it's a fairly solid piece of kit. I was impressed with the quality of the of the steel and the the, work, the actual workmanship was excellent, and it was good to work with too. Like cutting holes in it, uh, easy to bend and nice to work with. Of course, you need pliers and 
some tin snips here and there. Now if you're working on your own it can be a little tricky because you've got to hold these things in place and I used a hockey strap with a couple of nails to just position the run for the walkway so that I could hold it in place, cut the hole where I needed it, mark out things where I needed it and then put it in place so that I could get that steel banding that you can see uh, wrapped around it and screwed to the upper decking. I found that um, the banding, screwing the banding in was really, really easy and a good method of holding a run in place where you haven't got anywhere else to sort of anchor it to. And zip ties were my friend, I can tell you. I used hundreds of zip ties. And where possible, I bent over the cut wire to hold it into place as well. You can see I just kept on working in segments, cutting it to size, that run, cutting a hole in place in the cage where I needed to, marking it out with a texter, and then just cutting around with uh, some fencing pliers really, or any pliers would work really, but good solid fencing pliers are easier to cut through things like this galvanized mesh. This is just demonstrating how I marked it out and how I can clip through, make the hole, and if you're going on an angle you need to make the hole slightly bigger because then you can push in on, on the angle left or right and that's what I meant by this because I'm coming in on a slight angle. If you make the hole slightly bigger then you can push the run or the segment into the cage. You can cut it back to size if you wanted to but I couldn't be bothered because I think it looked neater just uh, coming out, poking out slightly like that. There's a look from inside the cage going over that beam. You know, you just got to adapt it to your place. Every place is different. I continued with the run on the right hand side just to bring it out to the end of the latticing. Those brackets there that I positioned it on, they're only $4.50 each. But pretty good I reckon. Then I did the other side, just one side to put it in the enclosure before I went on to the cat door, marked that out with a texter, made sure I measured it twice. It was one of those Romark cat doors. Uh, they were only about $19. Obviously I cut the hole out, as careful as possible. And then it was just a matter of assembling the cat door I ran into a few little issues, it was a little fiddly because um, some of the mesh got in the road a bit and I needed to drill out one of the holes uh, uh, after I put it on there just to make sure that the screw would go through properly. Then I just obviously tidied it up. But you know, it was a pretty easy job to do. I think anyone could do, those type of pet doors are really easy to install on anything. Then I used off cuts and just cut it to size basically. Bits of that 16 meters of cat run that I that I purchased, I used every bit of it, uh, measuring it out, making sure that I had enough and it was in place. I'd zip tie it first into place and then I'd get to the more fiddly stuff. I used a couple of house bricks to hold it up there because it needed to be raised. And uh, yeah, just cut the excess off and I could use that later for the rest of the left hand side of the cat run. Now I hope I'm not going to be too clever by half here but I've got a, a hole here that needs to be covered over and a hole here that needs to be covered over. So what I'm going to do because I need to cut a hole in here so that the cat can come out the cat door and then jump up here and go into the up wall overpass. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut, I'm going to leave this bar here so solid. I'm going to cut along here and then I'm going to fold that up and that'll be the door for this one. And then the next one underneath I'm going to cut it along that way. I'm going to fold it down and that'll come, that'll become the door here or the, the close off there. I think that'll work, it'll save me having to cut some mesh or make some other 
uh, closed off doorway. I reckon that'll work quite well. In the end I liked working with this mesh. It was easy to bend, easy to get into place. It was a better material, I reckon, or a better choice than, say, netting, because I've seen plenty of designs with netting, and although netting is cheaper than, say, this type of steel mesh, galvanised mesh, powder coated, is a bit extra as well. Although it's cheaper to do netting and that, I just know with my fruit trees and using nets for those things how netting does degrade over time especially if it gets the western sun which this actual cage will get in especially in summer and i just think this type of steel caging material is much better than the other systems that i was checking out even though it's a little bit more expensive anyway back to the build one of the last things i did was finish off the left hand side of the run and when you're going around a corner you just open up one side and then you can use your cut to go at the 90 degree angle so you get it to the center of the post open up that side and then you can push the run in to itself and it's quite easy then to get around corners like that remember I just keep bending back any jagged edges to make sure it's safe for the cat running in and out and I continued on with that left hand side with the rest of the run material that I had left using the banding trick again I used the Oki strap of course to get it in position and I banded it up because I didn't quite have enough to get to that last post to put it on a bracket so I used the banding screwed it in and really came up a treat zip tied in place and yeah I finished off with the ends just using some leftover mesh some of my quail mesh actually from my quail cage then I used the stairs that I got as accessories with this cage. Like I said, you don't have to buy the stairs and, and other accessories that are sold from these companies, but you know, they were exact size, they came with their own brackets. So I thought, why not? The grand opening for the Taj Mahal, Cat Mahal, Cat Run. Open the door there, and that's what you can do, you can go out there, it's easy. I think he might be too fat. It's easy, just leave him and see if he can work it out. It's going to take him a while probably, but if he thinks he can get out, he'll get out. <laughs> can he work out the flap? <laughs> what? Look. You can get in there like that. See the weapon? Looking up. You know that. Fill from the other side. Follow your nose, cat. See, working it out. Well, I might go up this way. See what that is. Up to level two. Nearly up to level two. But it's looking. This is pretty cool. Shoes or something. No. There you go. He's up. He's up to level three. He's Other side now. Yeah. There you oh, go. Yeah. So he's got it. Yeah, that's level four. <laughs> yeah. Cool there you go. Uh, cool. You can do it. What level are we up to? This four or five? Uh, five this could be five if we can get up there. Five. He's up there. Oh yeah, good one. He wants to get down. Come on, get up there. You can do it. The, the, the problem is going to be, how is he going to get back down? Yeah. I'm sure he'll work it out. We're going to get him. Oh, so if he can get up to the top of that climber. We can get him out. Oh! Then he'll see that. Yes, he is. Oh, he's around. He's over the walkway. This is a, this is this is amazing. Oh, he did that easy. He did it easy. There you go. Straight into the cat cage. Wow. That faster than I expected. This is a whole new world to explore.
Like he's straight up there, bada bing bang boom. He can watch everything. Then oh, he can see out. Thing. This is great. Well, king of the world. <laughs> it's taller than us. And that's as far as you can go, young fella. You have to go back now. Pretty cool though. Maybe I'll okay, is it how high is it from there? Then I can go under here. Oh yes. There you go, worked it out. Then you can go on to the next one. Wouldn't that's a bit too far? Well well, it doesn't matter for him. Yeah, he's down the base level. Oh, here. <laughs> <laughs> we can climb. Oh. Can do it easy. Well, that's that's there you go. I can do it that way he reckons. This is easy. <laughs> I don't need any of that. Hey? I get it that way. <laughs> Joking. Well, <laughs> oh, I went through all that trouble putting those steps in and didn't use it. And he's back up here. Can he find his way back out? We later added a kitty litter box in there and <laughs> he used it straight away. So we have a cool little box now outside and one inside and he uses the outside one quite a bit. And this is a good thing. It's keeping him occupied. It gives him something to do. Gives him that, uh, that feeling that he's hunting and doing what a cat wants to do. But he's actually not getting anywhere. And I think that is a really good balance. Because you want a cat occupied. Even if he's thinking of a way to get out of the cage and get into the garden, he's still, he's still being occupied. You have a good night's sleep tonight. Getting some exercise. And he can get some fresh air. The real smells from outside, not just staying inside. He can hear the noises, he can climb, he can grab hold of a plant and taste a bit of plant if he wants. You know, that is good. It's just exactly what I wanted for our cat. Look at him, he's so preoccupied, he's got his two paws on the cage there, just looking out, looking at things in the garden, just fascinated. He hasn't been able to see any of this stuff since he, you know, was born, being kept indoors, except for us taking him out for walks and stuff, but it's not the same on the leash or holding him. He hates the leash, of course. Most cats do, but really is enjoying himself out here. Like I said, I keep saying it's the next best thing to being totally free without the negatives. I think it looks pretty good from the back of the yard. Really can't see much at all. I don't think it's an eyesore at all. So 16 metres of cat run all up. That's uh, 30 centimetres or just under a foot square, that cat run. Then you had the internal enclosure which was 7 foot high or 2.4 metres high and 1.2 metres wide squared. And then the wall unit itself that came out from the cat door, that wall unit was 2 metres high and 5.5 metres wide. You are way too comfortable, cat. Are you ever going to come inside? You've been outside all day. Huh? Hello. 
I'm back inside. So I can be out here putting my boots on, having a look at the beautiful scenery, and Geo can be out here watching me do it. Now he's looking at the dog running upstairs and having a bit of a play, so the dog's going to come down now probably. And the cat can run over and see the dog, feel like he's out and in the action. So that. He adores the dog, but the dog doesn't like him. Well, he'll tolerate him. Uh, but I wouldn't trust them to be together, even though the cat is obsessed with the dog. And as a kitten, we tried to put them together, but he would just sort of ignore the cat and then get angry at the cat sometimes because the cat would claw him and play with his tail. But anyway, that's a, that's a different issue. I guess, it's, I guess it proves a point. Um, sometimes, you know, we know better than our pets do, don't we? And so for... Uh, again, compromise comes up. The cat and dog can still have uh, interaction, but they can be be safe. And so, yeah, that's a good example of the cat running and using the cat run and uh, being able to be free without being in danger for itself or endangering other things. At the end of the day, I'm wrapped with how our cat Geo just loves his cat run and enclosure. He's out here all the time and it couldn't have been a better investment in our point of view. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you've got any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. I'm also writing an article on how to build a cat cage and enclosure. so. Visit my blog, selfsufficientme.com, if you want to find out any specifics about it, like links and where I got it from and uh, retailers and some other options that uh, I'm putting out there. So if you want specifics, go and read the article. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.